Good day, everybody. Zach Gordes here with RevZilla, and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider, where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Our guest today is the BMW CE04. That is a fully electric maxi scooter for sale for about thirteen and a half thousand dollars. It's meant to mimic the approximate performance of 400cc counterparts, hence the 04. So on today's ride, we will talk about whether or not this sci-fi scoot feels as futuristic as it looks, and uh, perhaps talk about what it says about the actual future of transportation. Let's go, everybody. It's gonna be a quiet one. Alright everybody, before we get going here, a friendly reminder, this episode of Daily Rider is brought to you by Michelin. Michelin makes tires for all the vehicles we cover here on Daily Rider and many more. More importantly, Michelin is a fan of Daily Rider, which means every Michelin product you buy at RevZilla.com, Daily Rider gets a little bit of credit. So, the next time you need tires for your street bike, your dirt bike, your futuristic electric scooter, whatever it may be, click on the link in the description of this video, shop Michelin products, and you too will be supporting Daily Rider. Okie dokie, everybody. There's a lot to unpack here. Uh, and the first thing I need to say is that for a detailed breakdown of the build and some um, behind the scenes pictures at the factory, you can click on the link in the description of this video to the article on Common Tread that my buddy Andy Greaser wrote that's uh, quite detailed and it talks about where the bike came from and uh, yeah, has some pictures that I won't be able to show in the episode. Very basically, there's an electric motor back here and there's a battery that goes along the base of the bike and it's essentially battery technology taken straight from BMW's automotive vision uh, battery used in the i4 and iX I believe which means they didn't have a lot of choice about how long to make the bike and it's very long <laughs> uh, the wheelbase is 66 inches and to give you some context there uh, Triumph Rocket 3 power cruiser with 160 foot-pounds of torque and a massive back tire is uh, 66 inches long as well. I think a BMW R18 is 68 inches, so it's a very long electric motorcycle, to say the least. <laughs> to dive into some of the tech here, we've got uh, 265 millimeter rotors up front, j Juan calipers, braided lines, and 15-inch wheels front and back, uh, especially the back one is kind of funny looking. It sort of looks like a spare tire that you'd buy at Home Depot, but it is very much aluminum, as far as I can tell, uh, and more of a styling exercise than anything else. It's a strange looking little beast, I think. <laughs> and not even that little, being 500 pounds. So uh, yeah, let's fire up this TFT screen and get off to the races here. Get out of this parking lot where these people are trying to work. And of course, you can't hear it when it's fired up. One more thing I wanted to point out, oh, there's a belt drive here, which I wanted to point out. A center stand, which is an option, I believe. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was this kickstand here, which if I pick the bike up, I cannot roll it back and forth because when you flip the kickstand it yanks a little cable and it pulls a parking brake on the back wheel so when the kickstand's up you can roll it kickstand down no rolly sort of a built-in emergency brake kind of nifty right all right let's get to riding already can we gonna pull in this here brake the starter button it's gonna tell me it's ready and we are gonna ride to work by gosh <laughs> okay, doke, let's talk specs on this sucker. It weighed in on the Daily Rider scales at 527 pounds. And of course, it doesn't make a difference whether or not the battery is full, but the capacity of the battery, hey now, the capacity of the battery is 8.5 kilowatt hours, which might not mean all that much to you, uh, sort of classic motorcyclists. To give you an idea, of what that how that compares to other electric motorcycles out there the live wire from harley davidson has a 15 and a half kilowatt hour battery so sort of full size full performance electric motorcycles as as i see them as i see the live wire anyway uh the battery that's approximately twice the size of this one while we're sitting at this stoplight we can talk about seat height which i think this is the comfort seat technically which is a 31 point five inch seat height and it feels pretty low you can see i got a pretty good bend in my knee though it's pretty wide in the middle so it's kind of um the standover height is maybe a little bit higher than you'd expect for a 31 inch 
seat height. The standard seat, I think, is a little bit lower. But either way, it's pretty approachable, I think. Um, but again, you know, 530 pounds, which is, uh, the weight's low, but still a lot. Other specs, I mentioned the price at $13,500. That's approximately, well, this bike is actually as tested about 14 uh, because it has a $500 option for the comfort seat and the heated grips, I believe. Base price for the BMW CEO 4 in the United States is $11,800, but I learned that all of the models that are imported to showrooms in the United States will get the $1,600 premium package, I think they call it, which means uh, an extra ride mode or two and uh, tire pressure monitor system and, oh gosh, what else? Some other stuff as well. <laughs> um, I wish I could uh, remember it all off the top of my head, son of a gun. Anyway, bike we're riding is uh, about 14, which is, you know, expensive. But again, to put it in context, a big maxi scooter from BMW that uses gas is 11 or 12. And so is a Suzuki Bergman 650, which is, uh, you know, yeah, something like that. I think 11 or 12,000 bucks. So the scooter is sort of like in the, in the strike zone anyway, if not a little bit higher. And the horsepower rating, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's pretty fun, <laughs> pretty zippy. The horsepower rating is 42 horsepower, I think, uh, at a maximum with um, a claimed 20 horsepower approximately of constant power available, which sounds very low. It sounds shockingly low, uh, no pun intended. And that is sort of the nature of uh, electric bikes a lot of times is the horsepower numbers are not super impressive. The torque number on this bike is about 45 foot-pounds of torque, I think, which again is not a huge number, but keep in mind a couple things. One, it's supposed to compete with 400cc maxi scooters, hence the 04 in the name. So it's not exactly supposed to be a rocket ship. Uh, and also the way electric power is delivered is kind of different, right? To 40 electric horsepower is, um, I think in general, a little bit more thrilling than 40 gasoline horsepower. <laughs> As for ergonomics, I would say it feels pretty typical for a large scooter. That strange kind of long flat seat is pretty comfortable. I suppose it is the comfort seat. And uh, where you put your feet is sort of, yeah, just, just in front of you. It kind of feels like sitting on a, a Goldwing or something. Your feet are uh, just out in front of uh, your upper leg and the uh, hands are basically directly in front of you. You sit pretty much bolt upright. It's in general pretty comfy. A couple things did stand out to me though. One um, is that the forward foot platform here, my foot doesn't quite fit on, which is, I feel like a little strange. I have a 10 and a half or 11 size shoe. And um, if it was just maybe like an inch longer, I'd be able to put my foot flat on that sucker, but I have to kind of jam it in the corner there, which isn't great. And the other thing that's a little bit strange, but not uh, necessarily an oversight or anything is that the middle of the scoot um, is not a platform like that Vespa 150 we rode a couple months ago. You can put your feet right next to each other on a flat platform, basically. But this is more maxi scooter typical with uh, your feet have to be kind of apart like they might be on a motorcycle. And in general, you feel, you know, pretty kind of uh, in command. You feel like you're a part of the vehicle. It's not, um, it's not kind of flimsy in the way that small scooters feel sometimes. That's actually a pretty good segue to this uh, freeway portion here as we cruise along at uh, about 70 miles an hour. And sometimes regular scooters, for lack of a better term, uh, can feel kind of flighty and not great on the highway. But I think in part because the CEO 4's 500 and something pound curb weight and also the long wheelbase and the fairly raked out front end, it feels very stable, very, very stable. It's, I mean, it's great at doing this kind of thing. The big problem, of course, is that I uh, can't do this kind of thing for very long because this type of travel soaks up a lot of battery juice and the CEO 4 doesn't have a huge battery pack to begin with, as we said. But just know for short stints on the freeway that you might want to do, the CEO 4 will work just fine. In fact, BMW claims a top speed of 75 miles an hour, but I noticed that if you, if you hold it open, It'll go more than that. Go, yeah, 79. 79 is the most I've ever been able to get out of it. <laughs>
The topic of range is always a bit of a hot one with electric vehicles, right? For a whole plethora of reasons. My experience with the CEO4, for what it's worth, I did a couple of battery tests of range, one of which included no freeway whatsoever, just around city streets, surface streets, stoplight to stoplight, etc., etc. Never went more than 50 or 55 miles an hour, and I got 65 miles of range, something like that, before the battery was down to 3% and one mile of range. And then I did a test on a more typical Los Angeles sort of commuter schedule of maybe 70, 30 to freeway to surface streets, which sucks down the battery a lot faster. And in that case, I got about 45 miles of range until the battery was down to, gosh, 5% or 8%, something like that. The BMW claims about 80 miles of range, I think, but that's under ideal conditions. And I found if you're, I mean, if you open it up on the freeway, you're gonna get half that. The other hot button with electric vehicles, especially electric motorcycles, is charge time because obviously charging up a battery takes longer than filling up a gas tank. So I experimented with that with the CEO4 as well. When it was really truly dead, down to 3% battery, 2% battery, something like that, overall charge took nine hours, if memory serves. Plugged into my house, that is a 110 volt plug. So I mean, if you are gonna kill the battery on a ride, you're gonna wanna plug it in overnight and just let it cruise. <laughs> I did experiment with a fast charger, which was a lot better. I forget exactly what the estimate was to do a full charge. I'll have to put it on screen from 10% up to 100%, but it was a lot faster. I want to say it was two hours or something like that. So if you have a fast charger in your neighborhood, that would of course be an option. Overall, I would say not as convenient as rolling up to a gas pump. I'll completely admit that, but uh, in general, it didn't uh, didn't really harsh my groove too much. I found it pretty useful for the kind of riding that I did with it around town. And actually, the mirrors are something that I wanted to talk about because they're just sort of standard issue BMW mirrors. These are you see these on other BMWs. Same goes with the the blinkers, tail lights, all the switch gear. And you know, being in the BMW family, they're bound to use stuff that's lying around, but. Pieces of it definitely feel a little bit parts bin, just like the battery came from the automotive division. And I think that's the reason that the price, while high, is not higher than it could be, because they use stuff that they had lying around, which, fair enough. I know that $14,000 sounds like a lot for an electric scooter, but considering it's BMW, it could have been a lot higher for a ground-up design. Alrighty, into the neighborhood and the stop sign challenge where we try to come to a complete stop, unlike that car up there without putting our feet down and the oh man I messed it up the very first one I was about to say that the CEO 4 is quite good at this kind of thing <laughs> which it is around town is just the absolute sweet spot of the baseball bat for the CEO 4 despite being a 500 pound 66 inch long <laughs> uh, machine which again is big it is really really good at this kind of stuff because the weight is very low and being an electric bike the throttle response is completely perfect the pickup is ultra ultra smooth it's very easy to get used to there's no bobbles or hiccups in it it's really great for this kind of riding all right come on zach we got this we got this we got this yeah that's a good foot of stop yeah as we approach this stop sign, I'll point something out about the CEO4 that I think is really interesting. I'm not going to touch the brakes, I'm just going to roll off the throttle. And you see that I got to get back on the throttle to get up to the stop sign. Uh, the regenerative braking is um, just from the, the motor is quite strong, which makes sense, right? Because it's trying to pull back energy as the, as the mass of the vehicle decelerates. And I think it's kind of neat. You end up doing um, the sort of like one handed uh, axle decel, or I mean, you know, just no brake. Axel diesel, you only use the throttle, which in some ways is fun, I think, because it's a novelty. Uh, I did have a colleague who rode the bike point out that it does remove, to a certain extent, a piece of motorcycling that you might be interested in getting better at, or, you know, a skill that you want to hone. And that's fair, you know, like using the brakes, just like shifting, which you don't have to do on this bike, is a is a piece of this pastime that we're a part of, right? And, and we sort of like doing that stuff. And on the CEO 4 you don't have to do it. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing, basically. Corvette guy, three Corvettes at the house these days. Good stuff, Corvette guy, good stuff. 
All right, Lover's Lane, everybody, where we talk about passenger accommodations. My lady liked this bike uh, a lot, actually. Uh, granted, this is not a long-range vehicle, so it's in some ways easier for the passenger to like it because you're just going to be bopping around town, that kind of thing. However, you might remember that that seat at the back there was quite flat and there's no backrest, and it sort of looks like the person might just fall off the back. <laughs> but she didn't have that experience at all. She said it was pretty good. One downside is that it's not raised up at all. It's dead flat, right? So she didn't have quite as good a view over my shoulder. But uh, she said legroom was good and seat was pretty comfy. And because the bike is so smooth and kind of long and stable, she even commented on the wheelbase. I know, she's a keeper, am I right? Um, she said it just felt good hitting bumps and stuff like that. It didn't feel um, shaky or jittery or like uh, make her feel uncomfortable. So all in all, a good passenger report. Uh, granted, it's uh, a short-range vehicle. Yep. <laughs> okay, okay, into the twisty road section here, and we're stuck behind a Nissan Leaf, an electric vehicle. Stupid electric vehicles always clogging up the roads and... Wait, maybe I shouldn't... Anyway, the Z04 on a twisty road is uh, surprisingly satisfying, I found. Kind of... Uh, I don't know, I, expect, I expected it to be a total, just sort of like lumbering heap of futuristic battery metal and not be engaging at all, but it actually works pretty well. And I actually have not dragged anything on it at any point. And I've tried to a certain extent, you know, like going through little twists or on off ramps and if the pavement's good, I've decked it over and tried to drag something and nothing's ever touched down. So that's pretty good. I mean, it's better than the last maxi scooter I rode. Let's just put it that way. And again, from the perspective of range, if you're going to ride twisty roads on the CEO 4 you're going to need to live fairly close to them. You're not going to go 100 miles down the road and then hit the twisty section of road. But uh, but yeah, you know, for, for a bike that has 3.6 inches of front suspension travel and 4.3 in the back or something like that, it's kind of fairly feeble and 15 inch wheels and weighs 500 something pounds and it's the length of a barge. It's pretty good. Light to the touch. Works great. <laughs> Way better than it has any business feeling, frankly. Now, as we go downhill here, another thing I can point out is the dash. It shows uh, when power is being used, when the little bar goes to the right, and when power is being gained, when you're going downhill, for example, when, when the bar goes to the left. As you can see right now, we're dead in the middle. So we're essentially coasting as far as the bike is concerned. When I accelerate, you'll see the the power bar go up and then when I get off the throttle you'll see it uh, start regenerating pretty typical for uh, you know hybrid or electric automobiles it can be a little distracting if you want to geek out on uh, <laughs> power usage and regen but uh, but it's pretty cool and it's very clean this 10.25 inch TFT on this bike is pulled from the BMW K16 R1250 RT that kind of thing um, the BMW's other sort of large uh, luxury bikes and uh, so in some ways another part's been piece but it's quite luxurious and crispy and I don't know where the presentation is very nice they didn't overdo it which I appreciate for no other reason than uh, I just thought of it we could talk about ride modes now which change via this button over here uh, I'm in road mode I can tap on it I can go to dynamic eco or rain um, and to be perfectly honest, I guess let's go to Eco right now. Why not? So Eco dumbs down the response at the, the throttle grip, so it's not quite as sharp, and it might reduce overall power. I actually don't know the answer to that question. I found Eco and Rain modes to be basically the same, uh, practically, like when you use them, and the same with Road and Dynamic, sort of, yeah, comparable to the point of being redundant in in my opinion though i'm told that dynamic mode uh increases the regen when compared to road so when you're off the throttle it'll <clears throat> try to gather back more electricity presumably the same thing happens with eco mode oh yeah definitely in fact i can feel it i noticed that before but uh, i mean in eco mode and you shut off the throttle you slow down quite sharply oh hey coming over you all right buddy go for it do 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 go for it yeah, I yielded to you because I'm going to cut the line. <laughs> Look at those dweebs on their electric, but oh, son of a, anyway, 
where was I? Sorry. Um, D cell in eco mode is sharp. And one thing that I tested and noticed is that when you're off the throttle in any mode and the regen is slowing you down, the brake lights come on, which I think is kind of smart. So brake lights come on if you don't touch the brakes. Maybe you knew that was going to happen. I, I wasn't so sure. <laughs> Speaking of, we got a red light coming up here. We can test those brakes. Quick, quick panic stop. The brakes are very good. In part because BMW brakes are always good somehow, even though this is the like budget version of everything. This little uh, piece here, the reservoir cover, says Bybree on it. So Bybree is the is by Brembo. That's the sort of Brembo subsidiary based in India, maybe. That's the same component tree that was on that. Uh, ah, speaking of test the brakes again, that was on that Royal Enfield Meteor 350. That's uh, sort of famously cheap. <laughs> Point being, BMW used Bybri equipment here. They have Jejuan calipers, which are good but not necessarily ultra premium, and yet the brakes are quite sharp and the the whole vehicle slows down really well considering how heavy it is and how small the wheels and um, therefore the brake rotors are all right something tells me we're gonna be stuck at this light for a little while let's talk about the dash shall we the big old 10.25 tft so as you can see you can pull up some ride data on the side there if you so choose next to your uh charge and power thingamajig there and then uh if you tap down on this here menu button you go down to believe it or not a menu uh, my vehicle stuff, which is um, tire pressure, information, coolant, that kind of stuff. Uh, navigation, which you can use, which I'll maybe talk about in a minute. Uh, you can link your, your headset and your telephone. You can receive calls, pick up, hang up, play, and skip music on the dash all while you ride, which I don't think a Japanese manufacturer would ever let you get away with. Um, and you control it with this little click wheel thing, which is pretty typical for BMW. And yeah, it's all um, arguably kind of complex, but works works great. And once you figure it out, it's very clean and well presented. And of course the dash screen is very large, which is uh, pleasant and gives the, the vehicle a sort of luxury feel. Getting near the end of the ride here, everybody. And I'm trying to think what I haven't talked about. You know, this bike's a little atypical for motorcycling in general, and of course for daily riders, so uh yeah what uh what else what else haven't i talked about i guess we could circle back to what this bike means for the future of transportation is it a bellwether is it interesting at all to you it's interesting to me uh, for a few reasons not least of which bmw using you know automotive electric technology to to adapt to um single track mobility two-wheeled vehicles that's a big priority for bmw i'm told and i think it's smart to adapt some of that stuff sure you get a weird long bike with a screen from other bikes and can you know switches and mirrors and controls from other bikes and it maybe doesn't have that really truly uh otherworldly feel to it once you're in the cockpit but the truth is it does feel different to ride and it is practically good which i appreciate <laughs> now of course those of you wondering what it's like to ride down a dirt road we're going to test traction control, which I've been meaning to talk about to a certain extent. We're in dynamic mode. Yeah, there we go. Traction control is blinking. So this is dynamic. Traction control is very conservative on this bike in general. Let's try rain and see if we can see a difference. Not really. Just less snappy in the power department. So yeah, if you want to ride down a dirt road, go for it. But I don't think you'll have a... A lot of reason to do that, I'm guessing. Uh, in fact, BMW North America might be less than pleased that I'm doing it with this test unit at all. But we got a job to do on Daily Rider, do we not, everybody? Yeah, that's right. That's what I thought. Dirt road test. Uh, gosh. Uh, let, let's give it uh, three and a half out of five. So three, three stars out of five. <laughs> I've never done that before, and I'll probably never do it again. I'm going to go back to dynamic. And those of you who are Daily Rider fans will know why. Because we're going to try a wheelie. It's so... It's as long as an 80s Cadillac. And it only makes 42 horsepower peak. So we're going to try the old passenger peg trick. We're going to go for it here, everybody. <laughs> are you ready? Oh, my God. I'm going to pull my shoulder out of the socket. Come on. 
Oh no, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I got the front wheel. Oh, I did get the front wheel off the ground, but boy, I'm gonna feel it in my neck tomorrow. <laughs> and oh, hey, oh, and it's really, uh, you know, <clears throat> not the not the CEO force strength, I don't think. All right, last hooligan test. Can you back it in? Left hand rear brake. Whoa, oh, hey. <laughs> Uh, you really slow down. No, you can't back it in. It very much has ABS and it very much does not allow you to adjust any of that stuff. Traction control ABS. Not what the CEO 4 is about. I don't even think it's in the menu. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I couldn't find it. So no backing it in, unfortunately. Kidoki, we have arrived at the office and we'll do a U-turn test on this uh, long fella. We got three parking spaces to work with today and I think we're gonna need them. We'll see here. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Full lock. Look at that. Less than two parking spaces. <laughs> okay. Well, there you have it, everybody. It's just so fun to ride around at this speed. It's so easy to use. Really fun. Okay. Let's park here. Oh, shoot. I overshot the parking space. How am I going to get back there? You ask? Well, I'll just hold down this R button and we'll put it in reverse. Beep, beep. Cool. <laughs> Okie dokie. <clears throat> We're not going to rev it up and listen to it, of course. Can we do a burnout? No, you can't. BMW, huh? You try to like spool it up, get it going so you could like do a burnout, but if you go maximum throttle, that's as fast as it goes. What a bunch of killjoys. Just kidding, BMW. The looks are very, very polarizing. Lots of people have been like gazing out their car window at me. Lots of people sort of ask, you know, what, what the deal is with it. And I, I, I think it says something about design. I think it looks kind of cool, personally. But let's talk about a couple other things that I want to mention while we have time. Some of the uh, storage uh, this little guy opens up and your cellular phone can go in here. I don't know if mine will fit. Does mine fit? Maybe not. Oh, no, it does. There you go. It's got a little spring-loaded thing at the back. This compartment is ventilated. And um, it's got a little USB-C plug there, which is kind of nifty. And then this is the charge plug. Nothing super exciting there. And then this is the sort of main storage compartment here. Uh, which is lit by a little LED light, which I think is kind of classy. See the charge cords in here and um, my flat kit. A full-size helmet does fit in here. I don't know the volume in liters off the top of my head. But anyway, the helmet fits, which is uh, sort of the point of the whole thing. And one other thing that I wanted to mention while we're talking about it is uh, one of the options that comes in that uh, premium package, I believe, is an adaptive headlight technically. Um, it's just sort of a little cornering lights. They're up here in the in the corner and when you lean over they illuminate and I found them pretty underwhelming to be honest at night. I don't know. Calling it an adaptive headlight is generous I think. <laughs> Okie doke. On to Instagram questions. First one is from Moto Photo Trav who says I love the idea of this scooter and I would like to know does it stack up? Is it Tesla or Prius? In other words is it you know, fancy and futuristic and startup-y and premium and all the cool people want to have one? Or is it like a kind of budget econo box from Toyota that uh, may or may not have a bad reputation among performance enthusiasts? <clears throat> so to answer the question, I think it does, I think it's more Tesla than Prius. I think it's, I think it's cool. I think uh, it's striking to look at for one. And, um, you know, I guess to back up a little bit, it doesn't actually include anything particularly new, right? I mean, it's a steel tube frame. It's a standard scooter fork. It's got 15 inch wheels. It's got stuff from the parts bin at the motorcycle division. It's got stuff from the parts bin at the automotive division for the battery and some of that stuff. But it, 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 it all of those parts add up to something that is kind of special and neat. And I think, uh, I think that's kind of cool. And the experience is different. It's cool. It, it's fast enough to be engaging and it's useful and uh, it goes far enough that you can that you can use it to actually do stuff. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it says about the future of transportation or what exactly BMW will do, but I'm kind of encouraged and I'm interested in it, which I think says something. Hopefully that answers your question. Next question is from Happy Tappet, who asks, if it was a droid from Star Wars, what droid 
would it be and why? Well, if you go in Star Wars analogies here, it's a speeder bike. I mean, is it not? It's long, it's futuristic, even though, uh, of course, Star Wars was uh, a long, long time ago. Yeah, it's got to be a speeder bike. So I know that's not really, you're, you're asking, like, what droid is it? Um, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that it's really, it's, it's, it's got to be a speeder bike. It's just got to, right? Okay. <laughs> Great question. I love it. Next question is not so much a question, it is a comment from Bryn Andrews, longtime daily writer, watcher, and commenter, I do believe. I rode one a few months back, and honestly, I can't think of a better second bike for me. Loved it, but I still need an internal combustion engine bike for the long riding days. I like this comment because I think it's important that you take into consideration the reasons that you do not like this two-wheeled vehicle if you do in fact not like it <laughs> you gotta shake that just sketch a little bit right it's not supposed to be a touring bike if you have a klr 650 that you love for all the reasons that you can love a klr 650 this bike's not going to replace it full stop and <laughs> i i guess i get a little tired of motorcyclists in general all of us my, i find myself doing this being critical of new ideas whether it's electric or otherwise in the motorcycle space is like well i don't know if it can't go 200 miles then I, it's not for me i think we just need to kind of you know uh take a deep breath and think about what bikes like this can do for us rather than what they cannot do and i appreciate that Brent andrews has that in mind right as a second motorcycle and for some people maybe this is the perfect first bike or only bike but for a lot of people i think it's uh it is is it better as a second bike and i think uh, i like that comment for that reason. So thank you, Bren, for um, shaking my extra sketch, if you know what I mean. Last question here is from Barbells and Wheelspin, who asks the, uh, well, at least the, the $14,000 question, how long before electric scooters can replace gas-powered practically? I like this question because Barbells and Wheelspin did not ask how long till every bike we ride is an electric bike and it's all we ever do, because uh, the, who knows? And, and frankly, who cares right now? I think, can this replace gas scooters? It doesn't have the range and it's more expensive. <laughs> but if for a lot of people using uh, 400cc or, or even 650cc maxi scooters on the reg, I think this bike might, might do a lot of what they need from that. Uh, one of the cool things about this bike, one of the things I like about it, and one of the reasons I think it's interesting is that we're starting to get to a point where we can see a horizon where people will actually buy these and use them. And instead of it being some sort of like an ultra bespoke, ultra expensive thing from a premium brand, this particular premium brand, BMW, has released something that is at least accessible for now. And I think this is what electric motorcycles need are companies like BMW, Harley Davidson, to actually take the reins and do it, create two wheeled vehicles built by companies that we've all heard of, <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better way to say it. So how long till they actually replace uh, internal combustion scooters entirely? Who the heck knows? But we're getting closer. I think that's pretty cool. All right, everybody, thank you so much for the questions. As always, stick with me. We're gonna put this baby on the Daily Rider Leader Board. All right, everybody, here we are at the Daily Rider Leader Board, and we have the BMW CEO for Futuristic Electric Scooter Ready to go up here. Couple of pieces of context. One, uh, top of the leaderboard. You got your Aprilia Touareg 660, quite a versatile bike. Um, the rest of these bikes, uh, yeah, look luxurious in one way or another. Capable, versatile. The BMW CEO4, probably not gonna challenge uh, at the top of the leaderboard. For some context elsewhere on the leaderboard, down here we got the Zero FXE, so that has an all electric motorcycle. Finished pretty far down here, finished below the Vespa Primavera 150, which is a little 150cc uh, Vespa scooter, which kind of surprises me how I'm looking at it. Both of those bikes are under the Honda Grom, which of course is a 125cc street legal mini bike, essentially. So, will the CEO4 be better than? a Zero FXE electric motorcycle. I think so. That Zero FXE was really fun. It did wheelies, for one, which you gotta love, so that's tough. But I do think the CEO4, though it is more expensive, I think, it's more versatile, or more practical, I guess. You know, it's got the storage compartment, um, it's gonna be more comfortable for a passenger, uh, a little bit more luxurious dash situation, and, uh, and options, and that kind of thing. Better than a Vespa Primavera 150. Uh, if they're sitting next to each other in the garage, again, I kind of go back to that sometimes as a tiebreaker. What one would I take? 
I'd take the CEO4 because I like the luxury of it. I like, uh, yeah, the speed, the power, even if the range is, uh, is less than, a, than an ice scooter. My own money, would I buy a Grom or would I buy a CEO4? Ugh. This feels right above the Grom, honestly. It's more capable. It's more luxurious. It's more capable. It's in so many ways as an urban vehicle, just better. But I can't do it. I can't do it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to finish below the Grom, despite being a more practical vehicle in many ways than a Grom, than a Royal Enfield Meteor 350, than a Honda Rebel 500 even. It, it, it just, uh, maybe it's the weight of it, maybe it's the, the, the price of it. I don't know what it is exactly, but this I think is, uh, you know, what I would say, <laughs> being that it's my leaderboard and everything. All right, well, uh, that's, uh, that's it for this episode of Daily Rider. I hope that you learned a thing or two about electric scooters from BMW, at the very least, and how they do off-road. Surely um, you didn't have that information before, or hopefully not. Please come back and visit us here at Daily Rider again in the future, and uh, we'll do it all again. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. See you. The topic of range is always a hot one with electric vehicles for a whole plethora of reasons. My experience with the CEO4, for what it's worth, I did um, a couple of range tests, one of them being in, oh, we're gonna pick up this piece of trash? No, it got away from us. I'm trying to save the planet on my electric bike. I was thinking I'd be able to pick up the litter, but I guess not.